Hello. The Army's new rocket launcher thing, the Individual Assault Munition, is set to solve two of modern rocket launcher thing's biggest problems. One, they are really old, and two, they can't do much against modern armor, which is the whole reason we invented the damn things in the first place. But what will this actually be able to do, if anything? Is it any better than the ones we already have? And can it be used for a Rendezook maneuver? Hit the like and subscribe button if you don't hate me, and let's find out. In August of 2024, the Army awarded a $494 million contract to the Swedish defense contractor Saab in order to provide troops with a batch of the XM919 Individual Assault Munition, or IAM. IAMs are single-shot disposable launchers armed with what are called multi-mission rounds. These are designed to essentially be able to take down any kind of target from bunkers, light tanks, equipment, or one guy you really, really want pink misted and sent home in a Ziploc baggie. Requirements for the design needed to be less than 20 pounds, no longer than 40 inches, able to be fired from inside a building, and have a range of at least 500 meters. This would make it heavier than what we currently have in terms of disposable tube launch things, but maintains the same size and the same range. Originally, the Army wanted something that weighed less than 15 pounds, but this would have forced them to use either a smaller and thus less effective round, or lose the ability to fire from confined spaces. More on that last part later. Right now, the Army uses three different kinds of disposable rocket-type things to be able to engage all of those targets. The M72 Light Anti-Armor Weapon, or LAW, the M136 AT4, and the M141 Bunker Defeat Munition. On top of that, the Army also fields the Carl Gustav in smaller numbers, typically to light infantry units, while the Marine Corps has its small launcher. According to the Army Acquisition Support Center, the current suite of SLMs, or shoulder-launched munitions, are optimized for specific target sets. While this served its purpose in the past, the future fight requires the ability to defeat our adversaries across a wide spectrum of environments with one munition. That is DOD code talk for, we just spent the last 20 years fighting the flip-flop insurgency and now we're facing down a mechanized beach landing from China. As we can see from this declassified slide from a DoD PowerPoint, in order to develop the individual assault munition, the Army took five different models of shoulder-fired rocket-style weapon systems, activated their polymerization guard, and what came out was the IAM. Specialized equipment is all fine and dandy and incredibly useful, but it means you have to be right in what you choose to actually take out to the battlefield. If you bring a bunch of laws to deal with some trucks but run into tanks, you're screwed. If you run into a mechanized infantry formation and all you have is a bunker buster round, you're gonna wish you had an AT-4. Consolidating all of these rounds into one essentially means you don't have to risk the mismatch between target and your weapon system. But interestingly enough, we actually already know how these weapons are going to be integrated into the existing infantry units. This slide from the Army Futures Command showed a standard rifle platoon from an infantry brigade combat team. Within the three maneuver squads, each squad would carry two IAMs. And it's looking like the person carrying it is going to be the rifleman, which is generally the spot given to the new guy and has the least amount of responsibility in a firefight, but now that guy's going to be lugging around an extra 20 pounds of explosives. Now that doesn't mean the new guy will be the one actually firing it when push comes to shove, but at the very least he's going to be the one carrying it from point A to point B. An interesting note on this slide is that it also shows the integration of the new grenade launching rifle role in the Alpha Team's Grenadier. And this basically means the amount of ammo that explodes when it hits a target is tripling in your average infantry squad. But what it also shows is the kind of targets both are expected to engage, with the Grenadier taking on lighter targets and soft skin vehicles in cover, and the individual assault munition meant for things like bunkers, buildings, and armor like BMPs and BTRs that we see here. IAMs are not intended to take on actual tanks and rounds would need to hit spots that are a lot more vulnerable, like the sides and the rear, and you probably need to use a few of them just to find the sweet spot to get a disable. Now, although this is a new design, it's really just an upgrade of an existing platform that we already have. Kind of like when your new wife is a similar looking but hotter version of your ex-wife. The IAM is based on the AT-4CS, which itself is an upgrade of the 84mm AT-4. Get it? AT-4, 84 don't hate me for that one, I, I didn't come up with that. 
The AT4 has been with us in the United States since 1987, and despite appearances, they are technically smoothbore recoilless guns and not rocket launchers. For the sake of this video, I'm just referring to all of these things as rocket launchers for simplicity's sake, but if you want to have a mildly autistic debate on military nomenclature of munitions, the comment section is wide open for you. Able to penetrate 400 millimeters of steel armor when it was introduced, the warhead was, well, fine, at least against the targets it was intended to engage. But it had a couple problems, namely that armor rapidly reached a protection level that the AT-4's 84mm heat-shaped charge would struggle to penetrate. The Army eventually upgraded to the AT-4 Confined Space, or CS, version, which reduced the effects of the round's backblast so that it could be fired in and around buildings more safely. But the only difference between that and a normal AT-4 was that they put a bag of salt water behind the propellant which helped absorb the nastiness coming out the back end, but it left the actual warhead the exact same. Now despite what video games have taught you to believe, firing a shoulder launched anything inside of a room is a fast track to joining the tinnitus club and will rattle your brain harder than getting hit by an NFL lineman from the back blast. Normally this is fairly mitigated when firing outside because the blast has plenty of room to dissipate, but inside a room or an alleyway, all of that is just getting contained around your brain housing group. General rule of thumb, if you are in a place that you would not fart in while on a date with your sister's hot friend, that's not the place you'd want to be firing an AT-4 either. The M141 Bunker Defeat Munition had a little more explosive bang for the buck, but like the name implies, was designed to blow up dudes behind sandbags, not dudes inside of a T-90M. The M72 was in fact designed for anti-tank purposes, hence the name Light Anti-Tank Weapon, but like the AT-4, quickly ran out of armored targets it could handle and these days would struggle even against non-tank armored vehicles. The new IAM is designed to take on these kinds of targets with something called a Tandem Warhead. Normally, if you were to hit a vehicle with explosive reactive armor, the blast from the ERA would essentially negate the blast of whatever shooting at it. Equal and opposite reactions or something like that. But the tandem round is one technique around that. These are basically two rounds crammed into one. A precursor charge first hits the vehicle, with the purpose of defeating any explosive reactive armor. And once that goes kablooey, the main shape charge then has free access to penetrate that exposed, untouched, and supple hull armor. Hmm. Then, if you're lucky, you hit the ammo rack and make a few kids not have dads anymore, which perpetuates a cycle of generational violence that goes back to the Neanderthal period. Now, tandem warheads are nothing new. The Soviets have been fielding their PGV series of tandem warheads for the RPG-7 since 1988. The US has fielded tandem warhead style things in the past, but they were usually limited and in small numbers. These days, the only tandem round you're going to find is on the tip end of a javelin. But those don't exactly fill the role that the individual assault munition is set to take on, on top of being way heavier, bulkier, and more expensive. For a while, though, it actually looked like the United States was moving away from these disposable tube-like launchers. With more units being fielded Carl G's and the Marine Corps still having their beloved SMAWs. Now, reloadable ammunition does make a lot of sense. Because you can just carry a few different kinds of rounds for different kinds of targets with you like you would any other kind of weapon system. So what makes this kind of round special and why would the army go with the disposable option? Why not just have something that's able to put down multiple rounds down range? Well, there are a few reasons for this. The first is that I can't think of anything more American than littering a battlefield with single use plastic, except for California. You actually had to bring your own reusable launcher tube to the explosive warhead store here. Something about saving the turtles that I, I don't know. But C tier jokes aside, there are actual real benefits to this. First of all, they're easier to use. The all-in-one nature of the IAM means you don't have to worry about maintaining a launcher and all the things that go along with that. If your Carl G or SMA goes down, you have no way to shoot AT rounds, but if your AT-4 is busted, you just grab another one. That simpler design also makes them easier to use, and ease of use is very good because there are few things that will raise a man's pucker factor more than trying to line up a shot on a tank that probably wants to kill you violently. And that ease of use extends to having any kind of follow-up shots. SMAs and Carl G's are two-person reloads, and if you thought your mall ninja high point reload you learned from Bubba's self-defense and smoke jerky shop off the interstate needed to be fast, try doing that with an AT tube gun while under stress. 
If you don't have to reload, you don't need that second person, and all of that reduces training requirements, meaning it's easier for standard grunts to just pick one up and use it effectively. Disposable launchers are also a lot lighter and smaller, so it's a lot easier to distribute weight across several guys instead of just one guy carrying the whole tube. Unlike your standard rifle or machine gun, you don't carry rocket type things already loaded. That means you're slower to react to situations because you actually have to put a round in the tube before you can do anything else. And generally speaking, the amount of time you have to put said round into said tube is a lot less than you want it to be. But that only works if the launcher you happen to bring to the fight ended up being the right one, but now with the IAM, you don't have to play rocket roulette anymore. The DoD has shown three separate kinds of targets that this is able to defeat. Light armor, an earth and timber bunker, and a triple brick wall. Now the point of having a tandem round, which is normally used to defeat ERA bricks against non-armored targets like buildings, is called behind the wall lethality. Meaning, it penetrates the wall that the bad guys might be hiding behind as cover and then blows up once it's inside, rather than just a normal warhead which will probably bust down the wall but have limited effects on the actual people. That's because most shoulder launch things use shaped charges, which by nature directs the effect of the blast into the target. Now that's great for taking out an engine block, but not so good at hitting people inside. Now with the precursor charge doing the actual penetration, the actual warhead can then explode once it's inside and all that blast is directed at your actual target, the people inside, rather than just dumping all the energy into the wall or bunker itself. But on top of that, and this is a big one, disposable launchers, much like their utensil cousins, are a lot cheaper. One AT4 or M72 only costs a couple thousand bucks. A single Carl G launcher itself, without any of the ammo, costs upwards of 30 grand. And just the missile portion of a Javelin can cost up to $200,000. You don't even need to do the napkin math on that to make those numbers work out. And this is partially why, despite the IAM being adopted, the United States isn't even getting rid of all the other stuff it was supposed to replace in the first place. Back in December of 2021, the Pentagon announced that it had purchased $500 million worth of M72 laws to be delivered until December of 2026. For reference, that's more than they spent on the actual IAM, and the law has been in active use since 1963. To be fair, these have been made incredibly famous by major historic wars, like the Nicaraguan Revolution, the Laotian Rebellion, and the Bougainville Civil War. You know, the, the really big ones. I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head right now. But will this launcher actually be able to do what it says it's going to do? The IAM is really just the combination of two technologies that have already been in common use since the 80s, so how is it going to perform in 2030 when we all get sent to die while defending Taipei? Well, it's worth noting that the army has said specifically that this is for light armor, which in reality means anything except an actual tank. Your standard AT-4 can penetrate 18 inches of steel, but given that tanks use composite armor, a modern C-72 is able to defeat that round unless the shot is perfectly perpendicular on the sides or rear. We haven't gotten word on what the actual penetration power of the new warhead is, but it's safe to assume that because it has to cover down on all the other kinds of targets, it's only going to perform marginally better against armor. Taking out bunkers and walls is useful, and having the round explode on the other side of the wall is a definite benefit, but the only downside is that because they're meant to take out light armor, they can't be thermobaric, which is the best kind of round for defeating bunkers, buildings, and the poor guys sitting inside of them. So at the end of the day, the IAM is really just an upgrade of the AT-4 that can do a handful of things better than the old one could. And that's not a bad thing. But on paper, the military is talking about how it's going to be replacing multiple different kinds of launchers. But the reality is the M141 was not something commonly used or fielded really, and the M72 law is used more as a giant single shot grenade rather than a dedicated anti-vehicle weapon. And they're still being purchased in the hundreds of thousands at this very moment. So it's cool that everyone's favorite tube got a little upgrade. But maybe don't listen to the hype from Saab, who also tries to brag of their environmentally conscious while building munitions designed to kill people. And on that note, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.